and welcome to ILTV's Elections Arena. I'm Aaron Porras, and today in the ring, parties across the political spectrum are dividing and uniting at record rates, all to ensure success in the coming third elections. And joining us to discuss is columnist for Newsweek and editor of HistoryCentral.com, Mark Schulman, and Dr. Martin Sherman, the founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. Now to begin, our first topic, in efforts to shore up the ranks ahead of the March 2nd ballots, Defense Minister and New Right Party Chairman Naftali Bennett will now be running together with the right-wing National Union Party under Transportation Minister Betsyla Smotrich. So, our first question is, why did Bennett and Smotrich decide to run together? Aren't their views diametrically opposed? No, they're not diametrically opposed. They're both on the right. The strange thing is, of course, yesterday, or the day before yesterday, the New Right Party said they're going to run alone. They were basically more or less a secular right-wing party um, that was strong on defense, right-wing, but not involved so much on the religious issues. And then, come today, they decided to take Smutrich, who is one of the, you know, what's called Hardalim, which is extremely religious, and of course he's talked about the state under um, Jewish law, all sorts of other things that are very problematic in his statements about um, homosexuals, and all those things are really problematic. They don't match with the New Age uh, right-wing politics of Bennett and um, and um, his running mate. But the reality is, Ayala Chaket, sorry, the reality is they did it because of electoral votes. Last time, they ran, the two of them ran together in the first elections and didn't make it in by 1,900 votes. Mm. And their hope was this time they'd make it in because Bennett is the Minister of Defense. Did they ran with him? No, they, they didn't. Did. I'm saying the two of them alone. Oh, there yeah. was Ayala yeah. Chaket and and Bennett ran alone the first time. They thought because he was considered a good minister of education and she was considered a good justice minister that they would easily win. They didn't win because they didn't have really a real natural following. They lost by 1,900 votes. Bennett initially thought that, well, now I'm minister of defense. That'll give me a real serious position and maybe I'll get more votes this time. I think he came to the realization a little bit late that it probably it, doesn't it, mean much. It doesn't mean all that much. Right. It, he doesn't really come across as a serious... Not that he's a bad Minister of Defense. He doesn't come across all that serious. And Ayala Shaked has not been Minister of Justice now for seven, eight, sure. seven, eight months, and people forget. So the chances of them winning alone decrease, and they figure, okay, we'll take Smutridge's votes, and now this way we'll pass the electoral th threshold. Well, so we, so yeah, I mean, yeah, do you think they're going to split as soon well, as they get into the Knesset? Uh, uh, quite, but you see, when, by raising the threshold uh, percentage, You've created sort of you know, unintended consequences, like all sorts of parties who've got nothing in common bonding together be because they, they have to get into the parliament. You don't really have that with, 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 with Bennett and Smotrich now because it's rather incongruous to have Smotrich joining Bennett because Bennett all the time has been going for uh, a, a, a secular right wing and he's taken on someone who's very far from secular. But you have that on the other side of the spectrum as well with the Arab parties. The Arab parties, the joint list, you have a very he heterogeneous... Uh, Remember, uh, remember, remember why this was done, One minute, one, 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 one minute Mark. Uh, 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 a, a very heterogeneous amalgam. You've got you, you, you've got extreme e extreme Islamists with uh, left wing communists. So you've got you've got exactly the same thing on the on the other side. And and, and basically, it's it's causing a, a distortion of of, 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 of the of the, okay, remember, remember, of the ideologies being remember, being being uh, uh, presented to the voters. Remember why this was done? This was done by Lieberman primarily with support of Netanyahu. You're talking about the the, 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 the increasing stalemate. increasing the threshold rate. Now, ah, the threshold okay. was increased to try to push the Arab parties out of the Knesset. So it had the reversed, reversed consequences. The Arab parties are now almost the second largest group in the Knesset, and all the other parties have been fragmented and put the all, like, like Martin said, all these strange alliances have been put together. But the strange alliance with the Arabs as well. I, we, of course, but I'm saying it, was, it came across well, an, att an attempt to push the Arabs out of the I agree, I agree, I agree. Well, so, so, should we, so was that the right decision? Should we lower the threshold? Well, you, you know, I think what you see now is a very disheartening spectacle because you know without looking at, 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 at the details sort of the macro picture is is one a disheartening syndrome of the Israeli politics on the one hand you have a delusional left wing and on the other hand you have an incompetent and an, an impotent right wing and how do you know that the right wing is impotent and incompetent because the left wing is still a functioning a functioning political force after being proved completely wrong over a quarter of a century the fact that that the right wing hasn't managed to banish the left wing to the outer darkness of oh, but they of, also of, have of, different of, different things that they campaign on they have what, different what no what, 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 the, the, the major issue that divides the so-called left from the so-called right is the Palestinian issue, the territorial issue. No, everything, no, no, everything, no, no, everything else, everything no, so else is, is, is shades of nuance. You disagree? I disagree at this point. Yes, that's true. And there's, look, the two major divisions in, the, in Israeli politics 
and two and a half, I'd have to say. One is, of course, the Palestinian issue, but the left is not nearly as left as it once was. Very few people on the left live under the, under the dream that peace is going, to be, is going to come around the corner. They just don't want to close the option of peace ever in the future. And by they don't want to make an error. But, but second of all, there is the religious issues. And the religious issue is a serious issue in this country between religious and state, which hasn't been dealt with, and we sort of avoid it because of the Palestinian, non-Palestinian issue all these years. And there are also social issues. There are issues of, of division of, of um, the economics, the fact that Israel has gone from the, one of the most equal countries in the world to one of the countries that has one of the greatest wealth gaps in the world. Those are issues. And they divide between right and left to some no, extent. They, they, they Sometimes they, they cross really, parties. Because, because Shas, which is, which is it's considered right wing, is, pro, is built, I said, is, I said is built, is built some, on social media. Sometimes, it, sometimes it crosses social. issues, especially when it comes it, it, to religion. It does, that's what I'm right, saying. But it's not the all, major, it's not the all major right and issue, left. The major issue is the Palestinian No, it's, it's, it's not all even, right left. Even the 2015 well, so, election, even the 2015 election where they said the Palestinian issue wasn't an issue, but it was. Because the coalition was composed of people who, who, who opposed the Palestinian state or accepted it reluctantly. Right, well, and the opposition was the people who endorsed no, it. No, well, I want to I rein things in. Let's get a little bit back towards the, towards the right-wing parties now and kind of how they're functioning ahead of, ahead of the next vote. Uh, because to go off with Bennett, Smoltich also had to, as you say, you know, leave his own party, his own uh, united right, so party, the, and that, that includes Rafi Peretz, who right, is now uni united right, with Otsmai with, 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 That's part of the issue as well. So, I mean, look, Ben, excuse me, Ben Gvir and Smutridge, did, the differences between them can be looked on in a microscope, basically. As someone once said, an atomic microscope, see the difference in their... So why did he oppose uh, a unity with them up until the last second be, and then leave the party? Be, 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 because it looks bad. No, it's Ben Gvir has, look at Ben Gvir, and Ben Gvir comes across really as a far right, you know, crazy person on some levels. He was, you know, he's connected to, to, to the Kahana movement. Yeah. Uh, while Smutridge looks like a little more new age, a little more accepting, even if his views are yeah, not all that different. Yeah, so in terms of politically, having Ben Gvir in sort of says to people, wait a second, Ben Gvir, and you know, it's made it very clear, the blue and white has made it very clear, they're not gonna go into a coalition that includes the extreme rights. How you define the extreme right is a question, but, but Ben, know, Gvir, so ben Gvir is clearly the, part the, of the, the extreme right. Thing, well, the perverse thing in Israeli politics is that if you're on the right, you're crazy. If you're on the left and you've been consistently long for a quarter of a century, you're Ex sane for some reason. Excuse you me. Know, why, would you go, why would you go in with a far left wing like Meretz, who've, who've taken the country or, or supported oh, a policy, excuse, 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 excuse me, excuse me. Supported a policy uh, which has well, brought you, death you, and destruction you, you, to Jew okay. and Arab alike. You know, you, why, you, you why aren't they crazy? Why aren't they crazy? Why is he crazy? Excuse me. Why is he crazy? Talking, you can't Let compare answer. one from the other. It's amazing to me that you can do that. The reality is, excuse me. The, the kindness right, well, well, thing is nothing to you. Hold on, hold on. Let him respond. Let him respond. The kindness were involved in killing people. They were involved in the underground. They killed Arabs as terrorists. The mar you can argue the merits have a good policy or a bad policy. You can agree. Maybe you can, you can say. Okay. You can say that. So you let's. Can, you can say whether you want to believe them or not. You can say whether they've made mistakes or not. But to compare the two, the kindness and merits, you'd be making right, well, absolutely ridiculous comments. Right, well, I'm sorry, like usual. So, all right. Well, again, I, I'd like to, I'd like to focus again, refocus our conversation because I get, I, I want to get to the heart of why this division is even happening and what kind of benefit that has uh, to the right wing parties. Because Smotrich is saying that he wants to build the biggest right wing party. To the right of the Likud, doesn't that include Otsma Yudit and okay, Rafi he doesn't Peretz? Want, he doesn't want. He includes Rafi Peretz. He right. He right now wants Rafi Peretz to join him. He does not want Otsma Yudit to join him because Otsma Yudit has. Doesn't that help him ultimately? But, yeah. Well, but, yes. But, but, you know, this, you know, if it, it, read read Otsma Yudit's platform, and you will see that it's for democracy. It's for a Jewish state. You, you know, you, you, can, you can attribute all sorts of things that that, that, are, that are not in the platform, but that's what it is. And you know what merits the, the merits the, the merits Stop members. Stop comparing. Me, let me finish. No. Let me finish. No. The merits members went to, Ara, to Arafat's grave. You're talking about killing people. Arafat right, has got more that, blood on his hands. Okay. Than anything. But and they went to identify with a yeah. mass murderer. You know, you should be ashamed right. of so yourself. So did Netanyahu. So did Robin. Stop it already. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't go to his grave. No, but they well, I don't, I don't want to get into the what if. That, that, that's just ridiculous. I don't want. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to get into the what fact about that you say things are ridiculous doesn't necessarily make them ridiculous. It just means you don't have an answer. All right. Well, I, well, I don't. I don't want to get stuck in what aboutism because then we can compare things that, that are not always uh, you know, comparable. Bring, bringing up what aboutism is always an excuse for double standards. All right. So, get, getting back to topic, I just want to focus a, a little bit on on what's going on. That you know the ideology here and how that's going to play out in the election. So, if we're talking about the ideologies of Peretz, the right wing. Uh, and, and Smoltich and Bennett and 
Okay, so let's, 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 let's look at it from this perspective. Initially, the perspective of Bennett and Shaket was they were going to try to get the non-religious or the not-so-religious right-wingers who were tired of Likud to vote for them. They were a clean option, not to vote, you know, a little bit more liberal, a little bit more welcoming, the modern version, and vote for us, as opposed to Rafi Peretz, who represented the old Maftal, and Smutridge was with the, you know, with the old Maftal, so to speak. Uh, so they were going to be this new age, new age right wing. It didn't really work the first time. The second time, they got all sorts of new arrangements. Now they were going to try it one more time. Now it's not really clear where it's all going to come out, because we don't know. We're sitting here right now. Between now and tomorrow night, when the, when the, the, deadline, de yeah. when the deadline is, we could see all of them coming together. Right yeah. now, they're saying, Rafi Peretz, join us as long as you don't bring Otsma with us, with you. Mm. Uh, but they, well, but Rafi Peretz... That. Just, but but the, the, so so the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the big question. Can they all unite in one? I mean, look, the whole game is, I mean, is, it, is it actually going to galvanize voters in the way okay, that they... Well, no, none of it's a question well, of galvanizing. The whole well, issue you know, is not to lose votes. The thing is, what you're seeing now is a lack of discipline in the right. The, the, the left wing showed much more discipline. Even they took with him, they took uh, Emil Peretz, which the Labour Party well, we'll, would never go with him, and Ori Levy, Ori Levy was well, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the but, left wing, but yeah. But, 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 but uh, uh, what I'm saying is the left wing has been much more disciplined mm. than the right wing. They've showed uh, much more common sense. The, well, what, so what is you, all of this you, in the right going to hurt the right in the end, or uh, is it going to help them, or do nothing? No, no I mean, uh, if they if if they if they don't form at least two factions, both of which are assured of going through the threshold, it'll be a disaster for the right. Mm. It'll be a disaster for the right. And uh, right. Uh, I, look, it know, doesn't it doesn't help in any case. Uh, come in, then we'll move yeah, on. it doesn't move in any case. It doesn't look good. Let's put it that way. Regardless, you know, the goal is not to lose any votes. In the meantime, it looks like a mess. Like. Who do you want to get involved with this mess, mess right now? That's right, what well, it amounts well, to. Well, let's move on to the left because they're, they're having their own fair share of mergers and, and shakeups right now. The big bang of the upcoming March elections, actually, is how Amir Peretz from the Labour Gesher Party is declaring his merger with the left wing Meretz. But what influence will this have on the fairly deadlocked electorate? Because, again, polls are saying that regardless of all this change up, we're still looking at okay, a deadlock okay, the, the and result, possibly four. The, the result is going to be that the blue and white party is going to grow to close to 40 seats because people who were voting for both Meretz and Avodah last time, not that they were inspired by them, but they voted for them because they were afraid they would drop below the threshold. So a lot of people voted for either Meretz or Labor, depending on you know, who you had some sort of connection to and didn't vote for blue and white. Mm -hmm. This time, most of them are going to go to blue and white. And so we're going to see well, the, the, the combination <laughs> drop <laughs> from... No, I, this, is my, this is my prediction, the the and it's based on talking to a lot of people. So for a lot of people so who, support, who voted for either Meretz or Labor in the last election, a lot of them will now move to blue and white, because they want blue and white to be the largest party. So we're going to end up this election with what blue and white close to 40. It's the largest yeah, party. Sure. Well, it's, it's, it's the largest party, but it can't, get, it can't get a coalition. Look, but it's almost impossible for blue and white to form the government, because they can't form the government without the support of the Arabs and without the support of Lieberman. And that's oil and water. It doesn't matter if the blue and white is the biggest party. Let me finish, please. The, 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 it doesn't matter if blue and white is, is the biggest party, because to, to, they need to get 61. They can only get 61 if they have the Arabs, and Lieberman together. But isn't the right wing in, in the same boat, essentially? Uh, well, because that's what the polls because, are saying. because Lieberman has, has, has basically reneged on his pledges to support a right wing, uh, a right -wing government. And, and, and Look, you know, the answer if, is if the voters were rational, they would they would they would they would punish they would they would uh, they would punish Lieberman rather than 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 so reward this, him. So is this the end of Lieberman's party or the no, left wing? No, party? I mean, he's not going anywhere. He's been saying the, that for the last two elections. If, the reality if, if, is, if, if, Lieber, if the voters were rational, they would punish the person who prevented the the, the formation of a government. No, but, Lieberman. The, but Lieberman supporters are very concerned about the issues of religion and state. And they asked the right wing is mostly religious. Let's keep that in mind. So it's a real problem. The reality is. The situation will solve in two minutes, the minute Netanyahu resigns. I mean, that's what it comes down to. He gets replaced. There is no rate. The, you know, the blue and white has been saying all along they want to go into a coalition with Likud. Likud without a, an indicted prime minister. The minute Netanyahu steps aside, whether it's Gideon Saar or Edelstein or you name a list of 20 different people in Likud who could take over, in that moment there'll be a government and instantly. What would the policy of that so, government be? How do, it will not be all that different than the current government. It might oh. just have a few ministers really? who know what they're doing. You've got, you've got, you've got, you, you, you've got uh, Ofer Shelach, who's for in, in, uh, is high up in blue and white, who's uh, for a state of ordered citizens, 
You've got Yael Gilman who was in Meretz. You've got you've, you've got Hausner who wants and 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 Hendel who want to annex the, the Jordan Valley. The, the, the blue and white isn't a party. It's yep. an amalgam of people and who just like Excuse me. Excuse me. Lee, Lee, Lee Kurt was once considered a big tent party that had lots big of different factions. Big tent factor. on what? On economics, even on the issues of the Palestinians no, as well. No, no, Yes, it's always been considered a big tent party. It hasn't been recently. It's become much more smaller. But yes, the blue and white party. Go go think of Mapai of the '60s and <coughs> '70s and '50s when Mapai. Pie had never its right wing, never had right wing views. Excuse me, never, excuse such, me, never was, such opposing there views. There was between Mapam and some of the people in Yigal Alon, there was a gulf of difference between the two of them. There was huge differences between them and old Mapai. So, okay, but so my question then as, as you know, a voter looking at these parties and looking at their opposing views, yet they're uniting, is that. Should, should I be feeling, you know, impressed that, wow, well, these are people who have differences of no, opinion, no, no, yet they're coming together, no, or should I be worried that they're going to split off and be ineffective? No, that's well, the reality. Obviously, they're going to split off. It's, 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 it's very simple. It's the same thing that's going on on the right right now. Everyone is afraid that because this election is coming down to BBS or BB no, after it's the third time around, that everyone's going to vote for the big parties and leave the small parties aside. So on the right, they're afraid they'll all drop below the threshold. On the left, the same fear existed. And the fear that existed in the last couple of weeks was that probably merits, but possibly labor would fall below the threshold. And the pressure on Amir Peretz was so great that even though he had some dream that he was going to get right-wing voters because of Orly levy uh, excuse me, um, that he would get right-wing voters, he didn't get any in the last election. So the reality was he still believed that, but he finally gave in because the rest of his party said, Wake up. Because the, the rest Greek, of his the far left wing. They're not far left wing. Well, the they, Labour Party's far left wing. Of course. There's, no, they're not far of left wing. You, you define oh, left wing. So they, they, could, they could merge, most of them could merge easily with Meredith. You know what? I mean, so what about, what about Gesher? Where do they fall well, in? Well, uh, Gesher is just, just grabbing, uh, grabbing a lifeline. I mean, you know, what possible connection is there between Orly Levy, who was in, was in Lieberman's party, and, uh, and uh, the Labour Party, who've got, who've got, who've got people like Merav Mikhaili in it? You know, that's, that's, the, that's the point, and, and it's very disheartening. And, you know, I, 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 the thing that really worries me is when I see young people who have to go into the army and they see this going on, they say, you know, how can we trust our leadership? There's, no, there's nothing substantive. It's all personal. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's a serious problem. Look at, look, look, look at uh, uh, Peretz. Peretz left the Labour Party, joined up with Sipi Livni because, because they wouldn't commit not to join Netanyahu's government. When Peretz was with Sipi Livni, he joined the, he joined the Netanyahu government. And the same thing with Sipi Livni. That was a long time ago, though. I mean, no, it, was, it was a few look, years look, ago. Look, the reality is, look, first of all, everything is not the Palestinian-Israeli question. It's not. I'm sure. I mean, it's always it's a question. It's high up on the list. It's high. Security is always it's very up, high on the list. But security is up on the list. Not necessarily peace. I don't think there's anyone in this country from merits to the right who believes that peace is going to break out next month, next year, or any time in, in the near future. Oh, that's, now, that's, 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 now, that's good the, news to hear. Now, the, rea but the reality is that the reality is that there are other issues in this country as well. There are other issues There are other issues in this country as well. There are social economic issues that are serious and significant. There are religious issues that are serious and significant. They impact daily lives. The issues of the fact that the price of living in this country is one of the highest in the world and the income is not the highest in the world. All these issues come to play. And the disparity in income is a serious issue. There are all sorts of issues that have not been tackled with because we've had a government in but paralysis for a long time. The thing is, though, I mean, when we're talking about economic issues, and a lot of these issues are huge and they're very important to the average voter, but by your own admission, is security not... D does security, that not trump okay, okay, basically security, everything? Okay, security, 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 always, always, security always, always trumps it, but the, for the advantage that, that Blue and White have, that's, that's the so advantage important. Blue and White have is they have three former chiefs of staff yeah, as part yeah, of them. Yeah, so yeah. the reality yeah, is, let me, let me that, so, so who does Lee could have? Let me, let Absolutely say, nobody. Let me say, they've got, why? They've got Yoav Gallant. They've Yoav Gallant, who didn't make it to be Ramat Khal, that's the only person they have. Because for whatever reason, they didn't make it. The only reason, that's the only, the only person they have. The only reason that Gantz is Ramatkar is because... Is because, because uh, uh, they, they have Ashkenazi because, and they have Bogey Alon left because of the submarine affair. Uh, uh, so let's be real. Because of the submarine affair. Bogey Alon, unfortunately, Wait, so what, so, I say there's a great sadness. So what is the biggest Bogey issue? What's the biggest, was removed. So what's the biggest the, issue the biggest on issue, voters' minds? The biggest issue and how does that change of Geshe voter to maybe a Likud voter? The biggest issue, not in my opinion, but as a result of repeated research, is the security issue. The security issue. Now, you want to know but, what the... So, I, so, I want to say something about... I want to say something about about the the, the, uh, uh, the leaders of the the uh, uh, blue and white uh, uh, chiefs of staff. Gabi Ashkenazi 
just before he left the army, predicted that we could wean Sad uh, uh, Assad away from Iran because he's a moderate. You know, gee, you know, and, he, and, he, and he was head of Northern Command. Uh, Gantz supported the Iranian deal. Uh, Yair Lapid predicted that there were Palestinian flags flying on public buildings in Jerusalem. You can't believe a word they say. Mark? Look, I'm not going to go and look at every item and every claim not he's every made. Item. The rea the, look, the reality is you have three chiefs of staff. All of them were well regarded within the IDF. All three of them were well regarded. It's absurd. Now, the, rea the reality is, yes, Israelis vote on security to a very large degree. And who's going to make me feel secure? Bibi's great success in the last 10 years is it's been Abba Bibi. The fact that people felt that Bibi would keep us secure, his English was so great, he could defend us really well in the United Nations. And so they voted for Bibi because he would keep us secure. If it was Bibi versus Bougie Herzog, I would say, okay, you know what, people in the last moment, not that I don't like Bougie Herzog, but he's not a security figure. Whether you think Gantz was a great chief of staff, a, you know, so-so, or a poor chief of staff, he still exudes being the chief of staff. Mm -hmm. And so do some of those people. So the reality is, Israelis are not going to be afraid of voting for blue and white because of the issue of security. And they're not voting about, the, you know, people are still voting. The major issue in Israel now has become this issue of my tribe. I vote for my tribe. My What's tribe votes Likud. Tribe? What's that's the most tribes? Because but nothing to yes, do with well, I, think, I think he's getting, uh, if it's I may, you're getting at partyism, essentially, right. where people no, are no, identifying no, with their no, parties. That's, and, and no, no, but that, that's not true. As, a, as, a, you, you know, as I said before, the right wing has been very incompetent and impotent in presenting its case because they could actually tear the whole of the leadership of, 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 of Blue and White apart. They've been wrong time and time and time again. The reality, you know what? The reality, you know what it, it is tribe. Final, it is, it is final, final comments. Okay, so I will say it's, it's partyism. Look at the election. Look at all of the sec all of the information on all the recent elections, the movement between parties has been incredibly small. Mm. And people have an identification with their party, their party becomes their family, that's who they identify with. I mean, you look at people even looking, talking. It trans it, 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 is that transcending it, it, policy? It, it transcends everything. everything. You, you listen oh. to people in Stay What when they talk about right, Amir well. Peretz. Oh, he's great, etc. But I wouldn't vote for anybody but Likud. <laughs> Why? Because Likud is my party. Well, unfortunately, that is where we have to end it. That's all the time we have with the Elections Arena. I'd like to thank our guests, Martin Chairman and Mark Schulman, for joining us. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Also, remember that for more news from ILTV, please follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube. I'm Aaron Porras. See you next time.